And welcome back, Flight Sim and other stuff. And we're doing the tutorials for Access and O's and the Bay Ringer X Touch Mini. And this is the first of the tutorials. And we're going through the setup and loading it up ready to fly on the Cessna 172. There is no explanation on how anything works in this tutorial. It's just a very quick one. Get you up and running. And then we'll use this as the basis for lessons two, three, four, etc. Moving on, so you become more proficient. There is no coding required in this one. Um, later on, we're going to actually get into editing some code, but don't worry, we're going to make it as simple as possible. I am nowhere near an expert in coding. I am still learning, and I hope to learn a lot as we go through this set of lessons. So let's jump down to the flight simulator straight away. And the first thing we need to look at is uh, the downloads, what downloads we're going to need. So open up the browser. First of all, you must be running the current version of Lorby's Access and O's. When I say the current version, you must be running a version equal to or better than 2.32b24. Um, it makes sense because he's very proactive with the access and O's and it makes sense to check for the updates every week or every couple of weeks and make sure you're always running the latest version because there's a lot of enhancements happening there. So get the latest version of Access and O's. And then from the Access and O's downloads page, you need to find the in-game panel for displaying Access and O web gauges. There will be links to all of these uh, in the show notes below. And this allows us to display the Bayringer X Touch Mini inside the game or on a second screen. Inside the game is great for us VR flyers because I actually get to see the X Touch Mini inside the simulator. Then moving over to flightsim.to, you need the X Touch Mini gauges for use with Access and O's. If you've already downloaded an older version, the current version as of 23rd of August 2022 was 1.2. If you're running an older version than that, uh, please download the latest version and look at the video I've done. It's about two minutes on how to upgrade. Don't worry, you won't have lost any of the work you've done so far. And if you're brand new to this series, just download the version that's on the website there. You'll also download for this first set of tutorials, the first couple anyway, the X-Touch gauges for the C172 that I created. Uh, this is just to get you up and running. Like I said in today's lesson, all you have to do is download them and they're usable straight away. Next lesson I'll show you how it was configured and how you can modify it to your requirements. And then finally, you won't need this for this lesson, but the next one when we get into script editing, editing you'll need a decent text editor. Notepad just doesn't hang it for me. I prefer Notepad++. It's completely free and it's a brilliant text editing tool. So I would recommend at some stage you download and get that. Okay, if you've been following so far, then you will have downloaded four files. And if we jump up, you will have in your downloads the X-Touch gauge, whatever version, uh, 1.2 we're using today the xtouch172 files both of those from flightsim.to notepad++ which we're not going to need today and the lorbys content for the fit panel so let's do the easy one first and that is uh lorbys content we'll unpack this And we just need to copy this file into our community folder. Now for that, I use the add-ons linker. Not only does this allow me to maintain my add-ons in a separate folder to the main flight simulator and unload them and load them whenever I want, but it also gives me very quick access to the community folder. 
So I put all my add-ons on a separate drive. My flight sim is running on a solid state drive and all my add-ons are on a two terabyte hard disk. So if I open this folder, this is the virtual folder where all my add-ons are added. It's a real folder, but they create links into the simulator. Uh, I'll do another video on this if anyone isn't using this and doesn't have the faintest idea what I'm talking about. But we just copy the fit panel into there. If you're not putting it into there, you just put it into your community folder. Again, add-ons linker gives me instant access to the community folder. I can just click this right panel here and I can drag my content panel into the community folder. If you don't know where your community folder is, there are plenty of videos online that show you how to find it. Or drop me a message and I'll give you some information about it. So that was the easy one, the fit panel. Get that in and that allows you to see the gauge inside VR or on a separate screen, wherever you want it. Now we'll unpack the framework, X-Touch gauges, and we'll extract all. And there are the extracted files. We have the documentation in English and in German, well worth a read. Uh, we have the template file, which we come back to, and we have this stuff here. The contents of this zip file need to be put into your My Documents directory. So if I was to double click it, it'll open my WinZip and I can just drag that into my documents. If you're not using WinZip, then again, we would unpack this. And that file there has got some stuff in. I just drag that into my documents. So. My documents already has a Lorbiz access and O files in there. If I copy this across, you won't get that replace. I'm getting the replace because I'm effect effectively doing an upgrade. But you just copy it across. If you got replace, hit replace. Otherwise, it'll just merge. So there's our files in there. And finally, in downloads are the 172 files. Then double click it if you've got WinZip or Extract All. And there are those two files. These two files need to go inside that Lorbiz Access and O content. So My Documents, Access and O files inside Scripts. X touch gauge and you copy these two files into here as you can see I've already got them in and I've got a third file that's for lesson two so that's the files copied across now we need to start up Microsoft Flight Simulator and of course access and O's so let's do that so now we have the simulator loaded. Let's load the aircraft. Now, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, Microsoft Flight Simulator allows you to have different configurations for different liveries. And if I was to work on the default livery, then I'm going to set my gauges up for all of the planes. Now you may have already done some stuff with your default livery, so I'm gonna use one of the other ones. Let's use the Kenmore livery. And select an airport, it doesn't matter where. Set a departure and start to fly. So the aircraft is loaded, we're at a parking gate and we can go ready to fly. And now the simplest job, import the template into Access and O's. Oh, sorry, get rid of that. 
So Lord is accessing those and now we import the templates. So templates import template and we navigate to our downloads the xtouch gauge there's the template file and import you will get one pop-up and this is fixed with the latest version of the framework the pop-up is for a shift key now i don't have any joysticks plugged in at the moment but if you had a joystick plugged in not only do we have multiple layers on the X-Touch Mini, but we can also shift each of those layers temporarily. And the suggestion is if you've got a yoke or something that you're controlling with your left hand, put a shift button on there and as you hold it down, the X-Touch will have a second layer or a shift function. As I don't have a joystick plugged in, I'm just going to save that. It's set for a CH Flight Sim Yoke. That's obviously what Thomas was using. I can save that and I can edit that myself and change it to my own flight controller later on. So the template file is now installed and it's time to start configuring access and O's and load the template into the aircraft. So the first thing we need to do is go into scripting and the script editor and inside the script editor you will find on the left hand panel here um, collections of scripts for each of the aircraft we're doing this inside the 172 i don't have a folder for it yet so we'll create one manage script groups and i'm going to use a sobo a sobo C172 as a name and we'll click add. So now I have a group. Next I'm going to the X-Touch. X-Touch per aircraft template auto. Double click this and I just want you to click update. Like I said this is just because there is a minor problem in access and those at the moment but I need to close that temporarily and go into tools and save the database now that ensures that this template file is saved into the database so let's go back to script in and the script editor go back to that script now and I want a copy of this in my own aircraft and we need to rename it so let's delete the per aircraft templates section so let's name that. And under X Touch Script Group, I don't want it in there. I want it in the aircraft that I've just created. Explanation about these lines will be in a future tutorial. But for now, I just want you to replace the XXX in this line here with C172. It's that easy. And save as new. So I now have X-Touch Auto inside my 172 folder and in the X-Touch folder I still have the original template. So we can close that. I can now apply that template to this aircraft. So apply template to this aircraft. So it's the X-Touch template and I'm going to replace. That's ready to go. And finally, I want the script to run automatically when the aircraft loads. So we'll go into scripting and aircraft automated scripts. Script group is the Sobo172. The script is the X-Touch Auto. And I want to make this a one-shot run at the beginning, add an update. So the final step is to set up the on-screen X-Touch Mini. And this can be deployed as an application as a window inside the flight simulator which is useful for us VR flyers. Let's show you the options. If you go to gauges, a desktop fit from the drop down menu, select the instrument that you want, so the X-Touch Mini, and there we have it. It is an application in its own right and I can drag and drop this and put it on another monitor. And of course if I've got a touch screen I now have a virtual touch screen uh, I have a virtual version of the X-Touch Mini because I can click on these. 
I'm not going to use that one though. I'm going to use the web FIP. And I'm going to use the small version. That's all I have to do. By the way, if you do not see the option in here under gauges for web FIPs, probably is because you didn't run the Access and O's as administrator. So you must always run AAO as administrator. If that's greyed out and you can't enable it, come out of Access and O's and go back in as administrator. So I can't close that window, I just click anywhere. So once again, Access and O's is there, the web instrument is there. I can't close that window. The only way to close that window is to go to gauges and untick it. But if I switch to the flight simulator, just click on it, then we're up and running. So let's run some tests. Check everything is working correctly. Get rid of that. Put some power into the aircraft. If I want to see the gauge, I can now go up to my toolbar and enable. There we go. And if I was to turn the barrow knob, you can see the barrow knob is highlighted there and the altimeter is changing as I turn the button. If I go over to the right hand rotary here, it will be changing the large right hand knob on the G530. So if I start changing that now, you see the page turning. <laughs> this is this is sort of magic, isn't it? And then we have the up and down buttons here, and they will change the profile or the page for the access and O's panel. Uh, at the moment, it's the 530, so we're looking at all the analog gauges plus the 530. If I use the page down button, ah. page up and the page down buttons aren't working because I made a mistake don't worry it's uh, it's an easy one something I missed out let's go back to our script in and the script editor and the Sobo 172 X touch auto down here, this line that I've highlighted there, that is the number of layers that are on the X-Touch Mini. And I've told it it's only got one layer. And of course we got two. So let me just change that to a two. And update, not save as new, just click update. That's updated that file. And now the change won't happen until I either reload the aircraft or what I do when I'm working on this just disconnect from the simulator reconnect to the simulator and we're done so the script would have fired off again and we now have layer 1 and layer 2 I press the down button and we're now on the G430 so that's it, you're now ready to fly the Cessna 172 Steam Gauge and use the X-Touch Mini. In the next lesson, I'm going to go through how all of those buttons are working, how I configured them, how you can change them, how you can change the labels. Again, no coding required as such for the next lesson. And the lesson after that, we're actually going to start looking at the variables inside Flight Simulator and how you can start configuring your own aircraft. And I promise you, we're going to take it step by step. If you are a coder and you know RPN and everything else, then you can skip forward a couple of lessons as we get through to the more advanced stuff, or just look at Thomas's manual, which is really good. But for the rest of us, and I'm learning along with you, then let's go on a journey and I think this is the best thing for me in flight simulator that I've seen for over a year so I am really excited to get this working as usual thanks for your time and if you've got any comments drop them in the notes below 
send me a comment and if you've got any questions don't forget the Q&A section on a Sunday evening until then as usual enjoy your flying take care and goodbye <laughs>